Hi everyone, it's August 15th on Tuesday and you're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Hangout, our weekly time where we come together as a community and just chat about stuff that is relevant to everybody. Um, quick reminder, this is under the Chaos Code of Conduct, so keep that in mind um, throughout the meeting today, it would be great. And obviously you can have your cameras on or off, we don't care. I'm happy to have you chat with us in the chat window if you like. Um, if you don't want to have your camera on or your mic on, either one, that's totally fine. I'm going to move my chat over here. There we go. If you have not added your name and you'd like to do that, um, that'd be great. Uh, tell us if you like coffee or tea. Maybe both. Maybe you don't want to decide, and that's also completely valid. Maybe they're equal in your eyes, and that's totally fine. It's all about where I am and which is the most convenient to make. Yeah, it could be very contextual for sure. <laughs> Uh, okay, so first item on our agenda, the results of the Board of Directors election. Um, Sean, I'm guessing you put that in here because I don't I did. Nicole. I did. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Nicole, is Nicole here today? I wasn't sure. I don't see her yet. She might be here later. I don't know. Okay. Well, um, we had, uh, we elected uh, four new board members. Uh, they are Ruth Akiga from Chaos Africa, Brian Prophet from Red Hat Software. Uh, Anita a human uh, also very active in the chaos Africa organization and Kevin Lombard who some of you may have heard of before uh, Kevin's been with the project since the beginning so um, welcome to all of our new board members we will send out in Elizabeth's monthly newsletter uh, a welcoming uh, to them uh, but I wanted to make a point in a meeting and not deluge everyone's inbox because there will also be a, an upcoming announcement about a new co-director. Um, Nicole is rolling off and we are in the process on the board of electing a new co-director. Um, and that's about all I can say about that right now. Fair enough. So we will uh, maybe make a joint announcement then with all new changes to the board at once. Is that what you're saying, when Sean? Yeah, well, when's the when's the next monthly newsletter? I don't know. I'm guessing. Well, I was <laughs> going to say the beginning of September, but I'm I'm taking two weeks off, so I I don't know. Maybe yeah, I don't know. I'll have to see on my calendar because I will be long gone. Actually, the first of September I think is a Friday. So, I'll, I'll still be here. So yeah, yeah. I would think I would think everything will be resolved this week because I'm I'm about to get obnoxious with we're, we 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 basically I we need a quorum. And uh, I, I need a few more people to vote, and it's a, a difficult time of year to get people to uh, vote. So I am uh, I will I will become increasingly aggressive as this week goes on uh, to get that taken care of. Fair enough. I'm going to just put this in the minutes here somewhere that um, will go in next chaos monthly, which is probably September first. Yeah, I mean, we could do it. We could do it as a separate announcement or blog post too. And I'm, I'm un, I don't have religion about how we do it, but I also don't want to, you know, your point that the weekly newsletters uh, are a lot of work and I think uh, don't get read as often as a monthly one will are, are, are well taken. So perhaps these these new leaders will. Um, their their status will be more easily noticed in a monthly newsletter than in some other separate correspondence. I don't know. I'm not in marketing. Maybe somebody in marketing can help. <laughs> yeah, I think we do have a comms team of, uh, uh, officially, but I don't know who's on here. Yeah. Can we can we take a moment to thank the uh, the outgoing board members as well? Yes, um, I'd like to take it. Yes, we can thank um, outgoing board members, um, Daniel Scardo, uh, who has done a stellar job since the very beginning, of course, and also Don Marty, um, who's been an exceptional resource for us on all things privacy related. And uh, we'll be, you know, we value the contributions of these two people. Uh, there, there is a third board member who may be rotating off, and I. Well, haven't been get have not been able to get a hold of that person, so um, I'll just leave that at that. Mm -hmm. 
Fair enough. Awesome. Thank you to Daniel and Don definitely um, for your service. We appreciate you very much. And we hope you still come around the chaos community because you'll always be a chaotic, you know, once a chaotic, always a chaotic, I guess. Well, Daniel will definitely not be able to escape us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's tethered pretty tightly to us. So. <laughs> All right. Any um, questions, comments, anything from anybody before we move on? All right. Well, congratulations to Ruth, Brian, Anita, and Kevin. We know you'll be awesome because you already are. Uh, okay, so moving on to this item. This was an idea from Anita last week that we deferred to this week. So I'm going to turn this over to Anita to talk a little bit more about what your thoughts are on this right here. Um, okay, um, thank you, Elizabeth. So um, this particular topic actually stems from like the ongoing research that I'm doing. So originally, I know Elizabeth mentioned something about continuity for this particular effort. So we just keep track of it continuously to know who is using our metrics, how they're using it. And um, basically to help us understand our use cases and also understand the adopters that are already using it today and all of that. So I just thought it would be good to have one place where we can have all these things put together, the persons that are using it how they're using it and um, what ways that you think it can either be better or something, but a landscape project that actually curates all of this in one, I think it would be a good idea as well. Were you thinking something like, like the CNCF has that landscape project with all of the, the logos of things? Is that what you were thinking of? Or you were thinking of something maybe a little more detailed? I think I had the, the CNCF project in mind because um, it kind of curates most of the um, project, but um, it, with a bit of extensiveness on the use cases, because I think that's something the CNCF landscape project does not cover. So we could have them also put down the use case for the chaos metrics in their communities and all as well. And also efforts that they're doing in regards to that since there's like so much research around chaos already on who is using our metrics and how they're using our metrics. I love the idea personally. I'm also all in favor of this. And for some of the use cases, we already record the podcast episodes. So we could even link to the podcast episodes from the landscape and record those that we don't have yet. So it seems like it, people are in support of this. What would be a good next step, do you all think? I mean, I think it seems to me like a research project. So the next step would be scoping that and understanding the approach and understanding how we, who's leading it and how we as the broader community can support that. And I, I think it comes back a, a little bit to this conversation we had at the metric model meeting this morning about classification, because one of the things the CNCF landscape does very well is uh, categorize each of the projects and where it fits inside that landscape. And I don't think that's, at least for, I don't think that's a small effort, both to establish the initial classification, but then also to maintain it with some degree of trust and fidelity. Are you resurfacing the taxonomy project, Sean? I hope not. I really hope not. That's that's certainly not because I think taxonomies are are specific and you know and also not like nothing fits into a single. Sometimes a taxonomy has multiple projects inside of a single thing, and I think CNCF does a nice job of putting things into a single group for the most part. And so, gosh, I'm not intending to resurface that, the Sophia. Well, but I'm saying that we, we did that work before because I think the inherent challenge is the CNCF landscape that's basing it on 
functional technologies. And so you can group those things based on what they do. And yes, they're not always going to be clean separation between them, but something that's designed for networking is different than something that's designed for storage. So in our case, if we're designing around use cases, those are a lot more malleable. Um, and I think the hope would be that because of something like the tagging effort that we did recently, going back and retagging some of the metrics that we had, that might be able to kind of start a rough area of how we might be like grouping things and tags are not the same as use cases, but it seems like we already did some of that work already and have some metadata and structure around of our published metrics that ideally would give someone a starting point. Cause I think this is gonna have to have some organic research component, but um, I think it's always best to start from something versus nothing or else it's a massive project. Yeah, and that yeah. landscape code is actually, um, it's an open source project in and of itself. So we don't need to clone the CNCF one, we need to clone the actual open source landscape project. And we can look at loads of other examples because they've used it like the to-do group has their own landscape. It's actually been used by a whole bunch of, of other groups. So we could have a look at those and see how some of them have used the categories. Um, you know, and one of the benefits is like it's, you know, at its core, it's, I can't remember if it's a YAML or a JSON file that you need to fill out to, to add things and somebody gets to approve that PR and we can just make sure that the people are putting things in the right categories. I, I never cease to be amazed at the things you know that I'd never heard of, Don. Um, okay. could, could you put a link to that landscape? project somewhere yep. when you get it uh, yeah you know, i'll try to find it yeah and that you don't have to do it right now i'm just now i'm curious so is there a landscape of the open source landscape project this is what we need right <laughs> so we know who to look at it sounds it sounds like it would be a good technical starting point for developing our own landscape Yes, it definitely does. Um, I guess my question is then who wants to kind of run with this? I don't want to drop this on you, Don. It does seem like kind of in your wheelhouse a little bit. I, I'll say I think it's a big job. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think in I think Don's wheelhouse is already chocked full with the startup stuff. So I don't want to say I, I, I'm just going to say that maybe it too much, you know, it's up to Don how involved she wants to be, of course, yeah. but, but her, we've, we've stacked Don's plate pretty high already. And if there was someone else who wanted to sort of lead the coordination of this, maybe Don would prefer that. I'll leave it to her. Yes, I, I agree with that. I, I would, I would love to be involved and I would love to help. Um, I think we should definitely get somebody involved who can actually do the technical bits of installing that landscape app. I think it's, uh, you know, somebody needs to look at the technology and figure out what we do with it. Uh, because it is an app we'd have to install and run somewhere, um, assuming it's the right thing. But I'm happy to get involved and help out with things like, you know, the categories and help out with, you know, approving PRs as people add projects to it. And as a sidebar, Anita, I would love to just sit down with you for an hour and have you talk to me about the research that you've done, because I am uh, super interested in that and just haven't had a chance to sync up with you. And then I just took a quick look at the project, and it is mostly JavaScript. So I think someone intimately familiar with JavaScript, probably Node would be my guess, kinds of deployments would be a good candidate for the technical piece. Let me throw this out here. Um, so as you all know, we're working on the onboarding courses and there's a lot of moving parts to that. So we're kind of um, relying on some of our internal project managers to help us sort that out and figure out what tasks need to be done and keep us on track. Is this a project that could also benefit from having a, like one project manager that doesn't necessarily have to do everything, but that just kind of keeps like a high level like keeps on top of it at all and figures out, you know, what needs to be done and who's doing what and all of that. I see Don nodding. I think that'd be super helpful. In general, I'm just a big fan of having project managers keep people organized. So plus one yeah. to that. 
then we, we have them here and they are looking for things to do. And this is, seems like a perfect use case for that kind of a, a contribution that's incredibly helpful to us as a, as a community. And I see Yiga has, um, has, has volunteered herself to, to kind of help with this. So um, Yiga, I don't know if you wanna talk about like, where do you think we should do this work? Like, should we start a new Slack channel? Should we, like, how do you, what do you think would be good? If you have thoughts on it, I don't want to put you on the spot for sure. Okay, um, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so I think that starting a Slack channel for, you know, a different, you know, group for project managers would be nice just so that, you know, new project managers that want to join in, you know, it's just easy for them to say, oh, there's a project management, you know, um, channel where we can you know feel welcome and all of that and then that way they can also see new things um, that they can help with so yes I think it's a great idea and of course a good tool. thank you and then what do you think about a slack channel for this work right here specific to this project should we start one of those or make that work happen somewhere that exists already or what do you think if you don't know, that's also completely fine. I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm just curious if you have thoughts. Okay. Okay. So I think that um, because if we create a Slack channel for this, it means that for every channel, we're going to be creating different Slack channels. Oh, sorry. For every new project, we're going to be creating new Slack channels. So I think that's a bit too much, if you ask me. So I would say uh, maybe put it under somewhere that we can easily find a project that's already existing or something somewhere where it stems from. That's what I would say, just so that we don't have too many, you know, channels. Did my link die or did, did everyone, or did the whole link die? I just lost. No, I think it's just you, Sean. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Um, so Mary Blessing is saying to put it in education. Um, what do we all think about that? Another place might be the website working group. I mean, it's not technically the website, but it would have to live somehow hooked off of the website. So it would be related to that work as well. That website group currently is kind of a catch-all for uh, uh, a lot of the kind of the web application and knowledge-based work that we're doing. So. So that it that could be a place where the the meeting time isn't uh uh I don't think it's consistently being used so so there there would be availability there so I would also add that we don't necessarily we don't necessarily have to have these answers now we could uh we could take another week and kind of contemplate some of these questions and and bring it back to the next community meeting uh or we could present it to uh uh, some of the other working groups and see if they have feedback on it as well. Also completely valid. Um, Iga, you had your hand up. Do you have a comment? Oh, yes. Um, so just before it was said that we will move this forward, I was also thinking we can also, since it's one of the projects that will come under the project management Slack channel, it could be something that we could put there. So say instead of creating new Slack channels for each project, we can put, you know, projects that we're working on, you know, under the project management channel so that everybody that comes can just see what is available to work on in the project management channel. That's another option. Also completely valid. Okay, so for now, how about, I'm just gonna do a quick action item for me to uh, start a project, oops, project managers, if I can spell, channel. And then um, we can talk about it there. And like Kevin said, we can also come back next week and decide where we for sure want this work to live because we don't have to decide this right, right this second. But what I can do is start this channel and then we can also connect async. Because I do agree with you, you got like having a brand new channel for every new project we have is, is gonna be a lot and it's a little bit unwieldy um, for, especially for newcomers. So yeah, it's a good point for sure. 
Any final comments before we move on? Because we do have other stuff on our agenda. I just wanted to comment that I had a I had a very big smile on my face for not starting a bunch of different Slack channels. <laughs> yes. Kevin, well, Kevin Matt, is our advocate for not having more Slack channels for sure. I would have texted Matt and he would have called in from the road to shoot that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matt too. <laughs> Too many, too many. <laughs> I love that you all keep us honest and keep us, you know, organized. I love it. Because I'm I'm one of those that's like, let's just start a new Slack channel where that conversation can happen. So it's a good balance. Check the balances are working. Okay, if there's no final comments, I love this idea. Thank you so much, Anita. You are amazing. And this is going to be fantastic. I really love it. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Um, Armstrong, I know you brought this up last week as well um, about us moving off of Zoom or doing something <laughs> because of these new policies in terms of service. Do you have comments on this? Well, I just think uh, we, I was just creating an awareness so that we could think and open our eyes and what is going on in the community. When I talk about the community, like in society in general, because it has been a, it calls, call for concern in some of the uh, AI for uh, avenues. You know, we are talking about this ethical and uh, there is an ethical committee for most of artificial intelligence forum. And when Zoom make this move, the way we look at it and from that perspective is quite different. It's just a way for us to see, to put an eye on it. Then we can now start thinking if they don't really address things the way data should be handled and managed then we might be, think of uh, taking actions. Totally agree. And I'm really happy that you brought this up. Um, I know last time, I think Don, you said that there was a way for us to opt out. Do you know if we can do that? So we are part of the Linux Foundation's, their main account. So I don't know how much leeway we have uh, or control, but if it's something that we can do on our like sub account, I'm happy to do whatever we need to do. We should ask the LF because okay. I think that they will opt out. Okay. I mean, we've had that discussion in some CNCF projects and I'm I'm not sure exactly what uh, what the decisions have been, but I, I suspect the Linux Foundation will just opt out. Okay, excellent. I believe Zoom itself did uh, backtrack on, on a lot of those policies as well. So it, it, it may not be a situation where we need to opt out, currently that's okay. a good point i think maybe they changed it to be opt opt in but i do know it's controlled at the org level so we should talk to the lf and just ask okay but Armstrong makes a really good point i mean we, mm -hmm. we do i mean you know the zoom thing aside uh it's important for us to really think about how some of these technologies might might impact our community and how we need to might need to adjust over time it's i mean there's a lot of big changes when it comes to, you know, AI training and, and use of our data. Agreed. I think uh, anytime anything like that comes up, we should, we should definitely talk about it. Uh, I know from a kind of, from a community standpoint, it's hard to move off of technologies we're using. Uh, but the, uh, the, the more, the more we, I think the more we talk about them, the, the, the easier it is to, to move away from the technologies that maybe uh, we disagree with or that do us harm. So just having this conversation makes it a little bit easier for us to move away from Zoom in the future if we need to. Excellent points all the way around. And I totally agree. And I think our community would also mostly agree you know that this is something that's important and we should be keep an eye on and be aware of and definitely talk with open talk about openly for sure okay so i will actually i'm not sure who i need to talk to with the lf um but i can check with matt too to see uh who our contact is there because i don't remember um but we'll just check it out and then um i'll bring it back around next week and just let everybody know what we found. 
So thank you, Armstrong, for just bringing that up and making sure it's on our agenda to talk about for sure. Thank you. Any other comments, well, questions? Okay, let's go on to the next one. I'm pretty sure this is from Don. Do you have any things to say about this, Don? Or is it pretty <laughs> self-explanatory? Pretty self-explanatory. Um, I would encourage all of you, who, especially people who've used our software to fill out the survey and um, in particular, give us some comments on what you found uh, challenging about uh, using the tools and the metrics. But I would also really encourage you to send the link to the survey, uh, to the blog post for the survey, to other people that you know are using the software, because that and, would be uh, super helpful. And uh, I know, I know, Grimoire Lab and Augur. I know, I, I know, I, you asked us to send it to people we know who have used it, and I've done that. Uh, if anybody has Dwayne O'Brien's current private email address, uh, he was a really big user of Augur when he was at Indeed, and I would love to uh, get his feedback as well. But I have no way to reach oh, him look, except I, LinkedIn. I, I bet I, I bet I have. I it. could link. I could LinkedIn message him, but I never read my LinkedIn messages, and I assume he would be roughly the same. <laughs> All right, I'll try to ping him if I if I fail. No, I'm in some Slack channels with him. I can I can get in touch with Dwayne. Thank you. Thank you. That's an excellent suggestion. Would it help if Petrugia promotes this also on our newsletter? Yeah, I that would be so. great. Daniel said he would try to send it out to some people as well. So you might want to coordinate with him. But yeah, it would be fantastic if you could get it in the newsletter. It's going to go out in the next to-do group newsletter. And do we? Have, this is an odd question, but do we tweet anymore? No. So. Okay. Okay. So no, tweeting. we just uh, we just mastodon and thread. Okay. Actually, I don't even know if I threaded this. I can thread it. Is that what they call it? I don't know what you call yeah, it. Yeah, I've been using. Uh, yeah, I call it threading. And uh, yeah, but we don't um, tweet anymore from chaos. It's the home for X Twitter users. Get it? Next. Oh yeah, I see what you did there, Sean. <laughs> good. Um, but I did. I did put it on LinkedIn and uh, Mastodon for sure. So. Um, John, would you like us to like how, what what's the cadence you think would be good to to kind of keep pushing this or, or like does it have an end date? I didn't ask you this. Does it have an end date? Uh, my plan is when i when I come back from holiday on September twelfth to have a look and if we have enough responses, probably add it then. So if people okay. want an end date, we can use September twelfth because I won't I won't cut it off before then. I mean so many people are out on on holidays right now. Mm -hmm leave it open a no. little and especially in Europe might otherwise yeah but it'll depend a little bit on how many responses we get and so far last I last I checked earlier today we had six so not not a lot okay I will also put it in the chaos monthly oops okay yeah and I would say we can kind of keep promoting it via the social channels um you know, maybe maybe once a week or so ish. And I've been dropping it in Slack channels like just a couple a day to spread it out. So I'll I'll keep I'll keep doing that and I'll post it on some of my personal socials. But I, I really think we should get it out to the, the chaos people. Um awesome. Our Mastodon link, Sean, is I think uh chaos project at Fostodon, I think. All right, thank you. I think I might be wrong. I yeah, I can find it for you and put it in here. Any other uh, comments, questions, anything for Don on this survey? Don, Don Okay. All Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on if that's okay. Um, so this morning we uh, learned that we have um, a little bit of space available. Thank you to the Open Euler community who is a sponsor of OSSEU and has um, a, a slot that they're given as part of their sponsorship and they're offering it up to chaos if we would like to do that, to do something with um, community health and open source communities. 
Uh, this was from Yuhui. So I believe Yuhui said he was going to be, didn't he say that this morning? He's going to be there um, at the conference. Um, so I think Don, you also said you'll be there and Daniel's going to be there. If there's anybody else um, that is going to be there and want, like if you all want to try to organize something a little more structured or formal, I don't, I don't really know. It's, it's open for, we have two hours. So yeah, what do we want? What do we want to do? I think if we have something specific we want to cover, we should message Yuhui. I think he's kind of coordinating it with, with the people who are giving us the space. Okay. Okay. I think Yahui was kind of like whatever we want to do with it. It's open for us to use. So um, maybe we can use one of our existing Slack channels already <laughs> since Yahui is in uh, China and the, the chances of like him being able to attend this meeting or vice versa, whatever, um, are slim to none since it's midnight his time. Um, maybe we can use one of like the chaos con planning slack channels or something like that to try to formalize something or put something together a little more structured. Is there anybody else that's going to be attending that we can list here that wants to be involved. Okay, guess not. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it might just be the three of you, the three of you sitting in a room yeah. with some chaotic. Yeah. I don't know. Don, do you want to do anything with your data but, science? I th Matt's, Matt's going to OSSEU. I know this. So I'll be shocked if Matt doesn't go. So I'm going to say put Matt's name on there as well. Does, I, is he? Because he's going he to travel with you. I don't think he can oh. go. Oh, it really? was extremely expensive. I think he said oh. he was going to. Oh. No, it was okay. going to take him 40 hours and the and university also, will mm -hmm. only pay for the cheapest ticket and the cheapest ticket was 40 hours each way. Oh, well, all right. I'll, I'll text Matt. I could buy a ticket for him uh, because I don't have those rules. So, all right, uh, we'll handle that offline and University of Missouri, what I said is not actually true. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit this part out. Right. We'll just put a big, oops, I put Reese twice. I meant to put Matt. Um, Okay, so we'll put these as maybes. And Sean, are you are you going or no? I I have chosen a few other uh, okay. events, and I just can't travel all the time, and I also don't have a talk. So I think Matt and Don representing us there, and Yahui and Daniel. I think that's that's a plenty good chaos representation. We don't need okay. me at everything. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, and Anita said she might be there too if the visa gods allow it. Um, so. Yeah, um, so maybe next step is just to throw some ideas out for what we would do at two hours in a two hour workshop on chaos if we wanted to run something. Does that sound reasonable? Um, come up with some ideas for something like structure. It's like a mini, mini, mini chaos con. And it could also just be come hang out with us, <laughs> like, come, come talk about metrics with us, full stop, yeah. like, just adult, have an open adult, conversation. Adult beverages are often consumed at these events. <laughs> I mean, it is in the afternoon after lunch, so I don't know. And in Europe, so. And in Europe, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see, maybe use the chaos on planning. To discuss a sync with the three also. Okay. Sounds good. And if anybody has ideas on that, um, you can either bring them to this meeting or drop them in that channel or drop them in general, like wherever. Just throw them out there and we'll talk about it. Any other comments or ideas around this? Okay. Um, this is just a quick reminder, new Badger orientation um, this week on Thursday at 9 a.m. U.S. Central or 3 p.m. West Africa time. Um, this is a great way to contribute to the chaos project. It's pretty low overhead. You don't have to know anything about chaos or our metrics or even our badging um, initiatives. This is for events specifically. 
and it's pretty straightforward. Event organizers apply for a badge. We, our badgers go through the application and just verify that the information is correct. And then the bot issues the badge automatically. So it's pretty easy. It, um, if you just wanna learn more about badging, you're also welcome to attend. And just by attending, you are not committing to anything at all. It's um, just a one hour conversation. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You don't have to register, you can show up, but if you do wanna be added to the invite, just let me know or Ruth know, and we'll make sure you get added to that. So it gets on your personal calendar. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, another reminder, we still have tickets available for All Things Open, which is a conference in October. And if you wanna learn more about it, there's a bunch of information down here from last week. Um, October 15th to 17th, here's where you can learn more about it. It's a really great conference really, really great. We would just ask if you are taking advantage of one of the tickets um, that you help us with the chaos booth for a shift or two, not a big deal. Um, just talk about chaos to people. And if you don't, if you're new to chaos and you don't feel comfortable with that, that's also valid, but um, we'd love it if you just hung out with us at the booth too. So um, yeah, just let me know if you would like a ticket. Doesn't include travel, um, it's just the, the registration itself, but it's a good deal. So let me know if you're interested and if you're able to go. Questions on that? Okay, we are just plowing through this agenda. I love it. Um, next item, Augur Visual Installer. I'm gonna guess Hi. that was you, Sean. Hi, yeah, I'm, with us today is an Augur maintainer, John McGinnis. John, can you say hi? Hello, yes, I am here. Yeah. And uh, John has uh, completed the development of a visual installer that um, I will let him explain, and I believe he can do a two to three minute demo of. Does that sound right, John? Uh, if screen sharing is working, uh, that it remains be. to be seen. I'm just very um, excited about it because it makes the barrier to entry for Augur development much lower than it's ever been. Yeah, unfortunately, Zoom. Uh, and it still hasn't fixed screen sharing on and Linux, if, so. And so why don't we create a video and we will share that video um, on the Chaos website along with a short blog post, John. Yes. Um, and so for I, today, we'll just make the announcement. Yeah, I definitely am happy to talk about it. Um, this has been sort of a goal of mine for a while, um, almost since I started working on Augur. But um basically like this the script install process um it's really great for automated installs when you already have all of the um parameters set in like environment variables for instance um but it's not particularly useful for someone who maybe just wants to spin up the software and is maybe not super familiar with the terminal so um uh, it's still in testing, so it's not quite ready for a release to main yet, but um, it is now possible to fully configure an instance of Augur and launch it without needing to interface with the database or any of the backend commands via the terminal. Um, so obviously we're not expecting that this will be like the main method of launching Augur in production, but um, I feel that it makes it a lot easier for maybe a first time contributor to the project to launch Augur and see like what kind of information uh, is required minimally for it to run because um, there's a lot of optional information you can provide to Augur on install. Um, not all of it is necessarily required for it to run. Um, and so in the interface, we sort of clearly delineate between information that you definitely need for Augur to run and information that you can provide if you want to, or if you have it already defined. Um, and so right now it's just in the dev branch, so it's not quite ready for uh, prime time, like I said before, but Hopefully, uh, once we get some more people testing it and we get some feedback on what could maybe be a little clearer or maybe a better interface design, 
um, then we can get it pushed out to Maine sooner rather than later. And and uh, I'll I'll uh, once we have a short video introduction and a blog post ready, I'll I think I'll invite some folks to test it off the dev branch and and see if it really you know see what what uh, if any things come up before we do the main release. But we're very excited and um, grateful for all of John's hard work on this. Um, you know, kind of significantly lowering the barrier to entry for Augur. Yeah, that's amazing. Super excited to see that in, in action. Thank you, John. That's wonderful. Does anybody have questions for John or Sean? John, anytime you want to do a, de a demo or Sean, either, you know, whoever has access to the share screen and wants to do that, um, just let me know. We'll put it on the agenda. So no big. We'd love that. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go on. We have five minutes left and we have two other items. And I'm not sure who put these on here. So whoever would like to take the reins and talk about this, would be great. I admit I put those on there because when I go to the website to look at metrics, I know how to use the search and I know what I'm looking for, but navigating the metrics, I struggle with. And so I thought maybe we can have a little five minute demo of what the intended navigation of our metrics knowledge base is supposed to be and how to use the, the tags, the meta tags that we have, and also how can I find what metrics belong to which working group? Yes, I, I say I think my own brain's crippled by knowing the old way and so not being able to think the new way. So yeah, I think a quick demonstration of that QR would, would be incredibly helpful to the community. Uh, so I will say this, we on the website, the metrics are not currently connected to the working groups, as far as I know. Uh, so the the way we could add that would be by either adding the uh, working groups as a, uh, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the terminology currently, uh, not a tag, but the other, the other term. Keyword, or not? I'm sorry, not a, not a keyword, because the the keyword are, keywords are the tags, the uh, the context the term, yeah, the the context areas, or topic areas. Okay, so the the organization is by topic areas, and then the keywords uh, help in the search functionality. So everything on the website currently is organized by topic areas which are basically the context areas. Uh, we can put together, we could put together a short uh, demo on that if you'd like. However, I, I did want to point out that the, uh, the working groups are currently not uh, included as a topic area or as a keyword. So those would have to, if that is a search, if that is a search function that is desirable, that is something that we would have to add. And it's a it's a tricky thing because we've shifted away from metrics being organized by working groups quite a lot. And mm -hmm. the working groups who historically may have created a metric in many cases no longer exist. So it is a it is a tricky sort of historical record keeping thing. And then how do we handle new things that might have fit into old working groups? So I don't know, Georg, maybe we yeah. can think of a way to translate our own. I don't believe in mental models, but for lack of a better, clearer term, our, our mental models about how yeah. to navigate. Okay, so leaving working groups aside, can we get a maybe two minute demo of how the knowledge base is intended to be used and how the tags and words play into that? I just want to see it so I know how to use it myself. Uh, yeah, I think we can... Uh... Let's uh let's add that to the agenda on the uh for the next uh, uh yeah. web meeting, and we will okay. put together a presentation for you on uh on how to use that. So maybe a short um, presentation at the next community meeting instead of putting a gun to your head with ninety seconds left in this meeting, Kevin. Well, I mean, so in general, the uh <laughs> we 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 talked about this prior, but the 
context is really important hmm. when we're thinking about these metrics, right? So the, yeah. the one of the reasons we have a hard time putting these metrics in different buckets is because the uh, the the metrics that people are are interested in are going to be different, and and people come in with uh, uh, different contexts they're interested in, and and metrics can belong to different buckets and different context areas. So the way the way this was designed was to uh, to kind of give give some leeway in how that search functions, right? It's if you're a if you're a community manager coming in looking for metrics that are related to uh, your context, the, the theoretically you should be able to find those topics uh, or the those those metrics through the uh, the keyword search, right, or through the community topic area. Uh, but but we'll uh, let's we can think about we can think about how we present this a little bit more, and we can even we can even offer some guidance. Uh, I believe, and uh, additionally, we can we can add new tags uh, or new topics if that makes sense as well. So, yeah, thank you. I I would like to feel more more comfortable using our new website metrics. And I know there's mm -hmm. been a lot of thought that has gone into it. I just need mm -hmm. to learn that. So, thank you. I look forward to learning more next week. I think the. Uh, the important the important question to ask is what metrics are important to you and those metrics may be different for other people so creating creating an uh creating directions or 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 navigation that allows you to find those metrics that are important to you is is our goal uh without telling you what metrics are important to you if that makes sense yeah Thanks guys. Um, we're a little bit over, so I'm going to close the meeting, but um, we'll look forward to learning more about that next week. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. We'll see you here same time next week, same place. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.